Good evening, everyone. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and this is Lumber Tycoon 2. Well, not really. This is the sky. Um, yeah, that's the ramp. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yay! Hi, hi, Code. Wait, is, is he up? Is he up there? Yeah, there he is. Okay. Um, so, I am Code Primate. This is my character, Code Primate. And this is Lumber. If this is the first time that you've seen one of my videos, um, this one's going to be kind of boring because it's just me cleaning my base. Literally, you guys have asked me multiple times, clean up that mess. So I'm still trying to get organized, still trying to get things like things are exploding off my base and I've not even done anything. I loaded in literally and things exploded. So I was going to do um, something awesome and amazing up there. But uh, yeah, that's that time has passed. Um, I also I highly apologize about yesterday because I know random game night usually happens, but yesterday was my son's birthday. So I went to Chuck E. Cheese with him and we hung out as a family and, and like it was awesome. We got so many tickets and my first person out in public recognized me as a YouTuber. Like. Wait, my cousin watches you. Anyhow, that, that was awesome. Huge shout out to you. And thank you for cashing out the tickets and all that cool stuff. So, um, that is, uh, and I will post a picture on Twitter of uh, the lady that recognized me. It, it was awesome. That was amazing. So, anyhow, without further ado, let's get to cleaning. So, as you can see, I've already got some organization. I just started in on these. Uh, so, the Wobblehead Presence... I have got to get sorted, um, and what I've been doing is I just, whoa, whoa, hold on, I felt, did I fall down? Yeah, I fell. <laughs> and I covered myself up with a present. There we go. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. Okay, even the organization's going to explode. No. That was one simple thing. One little mistake. Okay, cool. There we go. Okay, let's just grab the next one. Here, let's get the pumpkins out of here. Move, move, move. This this is like, this might be too many presents for one person. So, um, I guess I should, I need to get rid of some presents. Like, I, I want to keep them. I want them all to be, like, I thank you guys so much for all of this. But this is, this is a crazy, crazy amount. And, um, it's, it's exploding my base it's making it unplayable so um, I will do this I will set something up where I give away a truck that has one of every kind of present axe gift and we will uh, we'll give a couple of those away um, I don't have any kind of competition or anything set up yet but I will set something up and get the presents arranged and ready for you guys. Um, it's going to be for subscribers only. Um, you must be a subscriber in order for it to happen. But I will I will set up the competition and all that stuff to happen. So make sure you subscribe and like and all that good stuff. And it, it it's really your choice. You don't have to subscribe. So no pressure. Oh gosh, come on, come on. Just, okay, drop there. Drop that right there. And then take this one. Turn. Why is the rotation so slow? Usually I can rotate like a lot faster than that. There we go. Okay, cool. Uh, anyhow, again, I do apologize about not being on the live stream, but family first, like I always say. And we had a great time. It was amazing. Um, they had an, a new version of Gal. Oh gosh. Oh man. A new version of the old Galaga or Gal Gal Galaxa Gal. Uh, it's the shooting game <laughs> with a whole bunch of bugs that like fly around on the screen, and oh, I'm just dropping everything here. Come on, get up there, get up there. Uh, so I played that nonstop, constantly, and Chuck E. Cheese is amazing for keeping the uh, just one token per one play thing. And I had uh, a card with like 50 tokens on it, and I played that thing forever. Anyhow, ended up having 247, that was one of the streaks, 247 tickets. I was getting 15 to 50 
tickets per play. It was awesome. And I was playing old school arcade style. So, you know, one joystick, one fire button. That was it. Gal Gal Galaxa. Galaga. Galga? If you know what I'm talking about, uh, then yeah, hashtag it for me inside the comments if you want. But that's that old school game with the, the one white ship, it just reminded me of Theus. And I'm like, wow, I wonder if, like, from my childhood, playing that game influenced my decision on the colors to make for the, the ship of my game. And if you didn't know, I am kind of making my own game. Um, I have not had time to work on it at all. Um, but I have created a second ship. So, the idea behind it is you're going to have um, 50 people that are able to join the server. Two teams of 25. Um, each one defending their own base. And there's going to be different modes. And it's going to be... Uh, different play styles and different things. But... It's, uh, it's based around an old game that I used to play called Subspace Continuum. And somebody commented about it and said, this reminds me of Subspace Continuum. Yes, that's the idea. The same kind of gameplay, the same kind of interaction um, and abilities, but Roblox style with Roblox abilities, which I figure it shouldn't be too hard to recreate and, and program. But filtering enabled makes things harder. And I, I want to make sure that filtering enabled is on. It has to be filter enabled. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, Lua programming, filtering enabled prevents the clients from changing server things and vice versa. So like the server can't talk directly to the client and the client can't talk directly to the server. You have to create these things called functions and events. Remote function, remote event. Uh, with... Lumber Taken 2, that is turned on. That's why the glitches happen, and that's why um, explosions happen and stuff like that, is because filtering enabled is on. And it's just one of the coolest games ever. I mean, literally, look at this. Look, I got presents. I got all kinds of cool stuff. <laughs> so, um, just because this is kind of boring, I will, uh, I will show you what my intentions are or what I had intended to show you tonight. Uh, and that'll only take a few seconds here. Let's step outside. I haven't even made it outside to start cleaning up the base yet. This is still just on the inside trying to get the, the bottom floor sorted. And I still haven't built up all the floors yet. Like, we need, we need a floor for every kind of present. Uh, anyhow. Some of you are looking at my money going, where's the money code? <clears throat> well, that's because I spent a little pretty penny right over here. And if your name is Penny, go ahead and hashtag Penny inside the uh, comments down below. Awesome. So all these right here are um, the uh, chop saws. And my idea was to make one, two, three, and then one, two, three right there and put them on a conveyor belt that has a hatch at one end. The hatch will close uh, a long plank from down there, 1.2 by 1.2. This thing will go and spit it out, bring it back up on a conveyor belt system, put it in here, and then long plank it out right here. And then that uh, chop saw system will have a hatch where the plank will stop, it's on a timer, and then all the saw blades will come down, chop, 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 Saw blades will stop, come back up, and it's got to be a really long timer because you've got to make six separate cuts on that one long plank. Um, I figure I can do that because I've got all those delay timers down there at the bottom for the uh, the trailer hitch glitch. The trailer hitch glitch. Tra tra trailer? Trailer? Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, um, there is a delay timer on there that like you click the button and then it doesn't fire after like so long and then it fires so I'm going to have all the saw blades stop come up that hatch is going to drop this way and there's going to be a conveyor belt like this so they'll they'll hit the conveyor belt drop down 
and then another, another conveyor belt like this to pull them back around and then pull them up on another conveyor belt system to deliver them into one area where it's nothing but one unit chops. The long plank that remained behind will go forward, 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 forward and hit, right? But that hatch will be back up and stop it. That are, um, I guess you really wouldn't have to stop the, yes, you will have to stop it. Hmm. I'll get that one figured out. Anyhow, it's continuous cycle. So as long as there's a piece of wood there, it will fire. Ch the chop saws will come down, cut, 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 cut. Chop saws go up, hatch drops, six pieces or seven pieces go through. Wait, one, two, three, five, six, seven. There'd be seven pieces because you'd have one at the start and then one, two, five, six. I get, no, I guess you'd have only six pieces. No, you'd have six pieces if you had five chop saws. So six pieces would equal seven, seven, seven pieces. Six chop saws equals seven pieces. I don't know. <laughs> Let's get back to cleaning. Go clean your base code. All right, all right. I hear your comments, I promise. Oh, goodness. Let's do this. And um, for those of you that were looking for tutorials and how-tos and walkthroughs on Lumber Tycoon 2, I've got a load of uh, different videos. It's just tons of videos on Lumber Tycoon 2, where to go, how to do things, how to get started if you're just starting out, where the best place to make money is, what the prices of everything is. Um, if you go look on the Wikia page, it's Lumber Tycoon 2 Wikia. It's powered by fandom. And those guys over there have the majority of information. So if you need information about like where trees are located or how much trees are, stuff like that, it's all there. Whoa. Look at that me, me promoting the Wikia page. You guys are amazing. Love you guys. Everyone that's over there. Oh, we also have that uh, Lumber Tycoon 2 fan group ran by Caesar. You can do, go check that out as well. Um, and then there's always the Discord, the LT2 chat Discord. If you need links to those, there's links inside my Discord, which is in the description down below. Uh, the reason I'm not posting the links to the other ones is because they're all already posted inside my Discord. So, kind of like a, hey, go join my Discord and you can get the links to all the others. Also, there was a lot of people that were upset the other day about me posting the uh, private server link to Twitter only. A lot of people said, I don't have a Twitter account, I can't get on Twitter, this is unfair. Well, it's not unfair because I posted it to Twitter to make sure that everyone had an equal chance. Um, I run uh, streams on four different platforms. You now, YouTube, Twitch, and um, Mixer. So by me posting it to Twitter where nobody was watching because I don't post to Twitter, although I could, I think I could Periscope that, couldn't I? Ooh, I might have to add a fifth stream to Periscope. That would be awesome. Ooh. Anyhow, for those of you that were wondering, my main form of communication is Twitter. And you can at me, at code prime 8 and I will see it. It does grab my attention. That's, that's like one of the only things that grabs my attention. Now, I might not respond to it because I do get a lot of tweets already. Um, so I imagine this is probably just going to push it even further now that I've said it on YouTube. Oh no. Code, what are you doing? Your Twitter will never be the same. That's okay. That's okay. We all change and things move forward. By the way, if you are going through change, like if you're in a new school or if you um, are experiencing a new class, um, if you've just moved, or if anything new has changed, I want you to know that change is 
natural. And it's okay to be scared about it. And it's okay to be nervous. Um, a lot of us go through change. Uh, I just recently got a promotion, a change from my normal duties, my normal job, to um, full-on programming. Like I am, I am the programmer. I am the programming programmer app, application programming application programmer anal, analyst. So it's it's okay. I'm nervous about it. I shouldn't be. I'm a really good programmer. I've been a programmer for since I was 13. And I'm I'm really good at actual programming. Like what I mean is oh gosh. Don't explode, don't explode. Calm, calm. It's going to explode. Everything is going to explode. Everything explosions. Everything's cool when you're part of the team. So, um, okay, what was I talking about? Nervous, nervousness, and getting scared about things. It's okay. If you are overly scared, like to the point that you're non functional, I don't want to say non functional, that you, if you're scared, talk to somebody, let them know. Talk to a parent, talk to a teacher, talk to a friend. All right, and it's okay to talk about your feelings, and it's okay to show your feelings to other people. Okay, don't don't bottle up what you're feeling. Let people know. And if you're scared, it's okay to be scared. And if you're happy, I mean, it's okay to express that you're happy too. And don't let anybody put you down about that. If somebody makes fun of you for being excited about something that they're not interested in, don't let that get you down. Do you know how many times I talk about programming and people just kind of glaze over? And there's this moment, like I'll, even with my coworkers, I'm, I'm a really good programmer and I, lo I love to show off my code and I love to show like how a SQL database um, query, whenever you um, create these, huge things to grab amounts of data from data stores. Oh gosh. Come on. I love to show other people how it works and what it did. And you can, you can tell there's this moment where they kind of glaze over. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I, I can pick up that on that and I'm like, you're not really interested, are you? That's okay. I am okay that they're not interested because I'm interested and that's what makes me, me. That, that's what makes my job special to me. Um, a lot of people are like, well, what do you do for work? Okay, work is what you see as work. Technically, I don't see my job as work. And I know a lot of you are going, wait, Coach, what, what are you talking about? What, what do you mean you don't see it as work? I see it as I go to a company that allows me to play with code. I literally, I play with code. I'm excited about new projects. I get goosebumps when I think, oh man, I'm going to be able to do a new programming language or I'm going to be able to do a different style of something. And I'll get into these projects and it's the same on every project. Like you'll start this project and you'll see this the end goal, you'll like write out what your what your destination is. And you'll get started thinking, oh I can I can do this. It, it'll be easy. And then there's this huge pitfall of like, oh my gosh, what did I get into? This is going to take forever. And it's just this desperation, like, oh man. It's with every project, everything that I've ever done. I don't think there's ever been a, a project that just started easy, went smoothly, and there was no problems. But um, after about a week of programming it, of setting things up and getting things running in a certain direction, it inclines. And I'm like, I can do this. This is no problem. We're, we're going to get this done. And then you get to like the peak of when the project's actually finishing and you see the result of this 
thing that you started? I'm trying not to get into too much details to bore you with the, like, what it is I do. But I want you to know that it's, it's really fun. I really love what I do. And I want you to love what you do. If you don't love your job, if you go to work every day like, oh man, I gotta get up and I gotta go to work, blah, blah, blah. Then either A, do something about it. Change your job. Because you don't have to stay there. And this is, this is for the parents as well. If you get up just because, oh, I gotta go make a paycheck, there are other things that will make you a paycheck. There are other things. And if you've been at a job for 10 years, okay, there, if it's 10 years, the quality of what you do, I want you to know that there's an equivalent. If you enjoy what you do, the quality of life goes up. If you are happy with where you're at, fine. Stay there. Be happy. Be Do what makes you happy. And if you are not happy, then please, like, I, I encourage you, talk about it. Tell, tell your boss, tell your coworkers, tell somebody. Like, say, hey, this, is, this isn't for me. This isn't what I wanted, you know? And you'll be amazed. You would be amazed at how many people will listen. Now, there's other people that'd be like, well, you need to stop complaining and just make it happen. Okay. Um, another thing, if you're getting yelled at at your job, if your boss thinks they can talk to you and belittle you or put you down, you do not have to put up with it. You do not have to work for them. You do not have to stay there. You have every right to work at a job where you're not going to get yelled at. And I, that's that's how I, tr I strongly feel. Um, and the reason I feel that is because it's not the military. If you're in the military and your superior is yelling and screaming and belittling you, you don't have to put up with it. There's... <laughs> Half, half the people that are in the military just looked at me going, what? You don't have to put up with it. You are a human, be human being. And that is before anything else. Being human and getting spoken to like a human being is before Marine Corps. It is before military. It is before anything else. Do not let anybody treat you less than you. Oh my goodness. Hello. Thank you, Brian Am Amores. For the subscribe. Look at that. Getting. That, that scared me a little bit. I, I'm not going to lie. The hair on my back. On the back of my neck just went. What was that? I was not expecting that. Oh man. Okay. Fire presence. Let's move on to fire presence. I'm actually making some progress. And I didn't, I didn't realize it. And it's because I'm talking to you guys. But like with everything. Uh, we should take a break, just for a second. Union break! Union break! Mm. Mm. Um, be careful what you post on the internet. And this is for Twitter, this is for YouTube, this is for anything and everything. When you post something on the internet, think... Are you going to feel that way in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years? Are you comfortable with your with your kids? And I'm talking to um, 10 years old, 10 year olds right now. Are you okay with your great grandchildren reading what you posted 50 years from now? Are you okay with what you post influencing somebody else's child? And if you are okay with that, and it's not something nice, seriously think about the consequences of your actions. I won't get into like what I'm talking about, but as of recently, there has been different videos, and there's been different tweets, and there's been different posts of various actions that you guys probably have seen and I'm sitting here thinking, there are 
children in the world, and uh, it doesn't even have to be children. There are other adults in the world who are reading this and thinking that this is the way the world works. And quite frankly, I don't like the way the world works. I want to change it. So I'm trying to live the way I want the world to be. So, do I have these yet? Do I, do, is there a space for these? <sighs> oh, yes there is. Yay. And it looks like I found that missing box that, that jumped up earlier. Oh gosh. So, be the world that you want it to be. Not the world that it is. And what's funny is the older audience that's looking at me right now going, you're crazy code, or if you're bad-mouthing me right now, I want you to realize something, that you're going to grow up. And if you're already a grown-up, I want you to realize that your children are watching me. And I want them to be confident about themselves. And I want them to be nice to others. And I want you to be nice to others. And I want you to think about things in the way that the future is coming. Ow, ow. Or the future is going to go. I don't want to see in 20 years um, a downfall of the internet. I don't want to see YouTube demonetizing family-friendly content. Like, even, even right now, I'm, I'm probably going to have to go and hit the review button, review manually, on this video, because it's going to get demonetized. Now, I know for a fact that I'm producing a family-friendly channel. There's no cussing, there's no cursing, there's no blood, there's no violence. This is rated E for everyone. Now, what's funny is, even though it's rated E for everyone, I talk about some profound and life-changing things, and I give you this weird overall confidence of the way that you think about yourself and that you think about others around you and it's influ influential and that's huge so my question is if it gets flagged as not suitable for most advertisers then does that mean that I'm a threat to most advertisers It's humbling. <laughs> um, I, I hope you become a subscriber. And if you're not already a subscriber, I want you to become a subscriber. And I don't have a place for pumpkins yet. So we'll <laughs> take this back down. Oh, goodness. This is some very close quarters um, cleaning, by the way. Oh, gosh. Don't explode the axes. The axes really should be in the axe shop. And I should probably put another level to the axe shop. Okay. Did I? I've still got a ton of these. So these need to go up. Alright, hold on. Let me check the time. How long have we been recording? Oh my gosh. It's been 28 minutes. It's almost been 30 minutes of pure cleaning for you guys. Um. Well, I take that back. We did go up and check out what I was wanting to build earlier. <laughs> be be proud of who you are. And be proud of your family. I know that there's a, there's a lot of times that brothers and sisters will fight. And I'm talking to my kids as well. Because I know... I'm. I know you're not watching me right now, but there's going to be a time when, like, your your kids. <laughs> so this is thinking way outside the box. Even though my children, they watch me every once in a while, I started the channel for them because I wanted them to have somebody that they could go and watch without cussing, cursing, and raging, and all the other things that come with YouTube gaming, which that is wow. Really? That's where our gaming world has gone to? Now there are other content creators, there are other parents out there who are making content 
on Roblox and other games who I feel strongly connected to. They're making a difference in the world and I hope that it continues. I hope that I'm not the only one that stands out. I hope that I'm not the only one that's doing this. And I hope it continues. Um, but back to what I was saying, I know that my kids don't watch me constantly and I know that they're not going to. That's just the way it is. They're growing up and someday I won't be around to make videos. Either A, I'm going to be too old, B, something changes in my, my YouTube status, my YouTuber status, or naturally, I won't be here. Um, now this is, this is a painfully strong subject to talk about. So if, if you're younger, it's okay. And if you're older, it's okay because everyone eventually will. And what I'm talking about is passing away. My grandmother was the first time that I'd experienced um, a family member passing. And it was, it was very emotional for me. But um, my mother explained it to me in tear-filled eyes. She explained that everyone will eventually pass. Um, even the oldest living woman right now is only 109, I think. Or it might, it might be 119. So, that's, that's a long life. Average life for men, I believe, is 68. So, that's average. Um, my, uh, sorry, sorry, got lost in thought for a second. My grandmother, um, was the nicest lady that I know. She was so sweet and I loved her so much. And it was a long time ago. And it, the emotions didn't hit me at the time. They didn't hit me until quite a time later. In fact, um, it, was, it was almost a year after that the emotion actually hit. And I was in second grade, Mrs. Long's class, and just I just started crying hysterically and I, I couldn't understand why but I missed my grandmother so much and it was at that particular point in time that I realized everyone will eventually pass so to get off of the uh, the bad subject sorry I don't want to say bad because it is it's natural and it's okay and it's it's okay but my original point was, even though my children don't watch me now, the things that I'm placing onto the internet will be here in the future. And this influence that is happening right now, as, as I'm recording it, like, well, it's not right now for you guys. It's <laughs> scheduled posting forward. Um, it will be here for my grandkids, for my grandkids' grandkids, for their friends. For you and it'll be here forever and that's a very humbling thought and I hope that is what I leave the world that I love you that I want it to be a good place for you to live and that there's a ton of amazing things for you to experience and to have Be the best that you can, and be good. So, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Check out the links. Do that thing with the the Hello Juniper and you know whatever whatever I'm supposed to call out as a YouTuber. And <laughs> thank you for listening to me ramble. I know I hit on a lot of deeper subjects tonight, and it happens, and it's okay to talk about. I love you guys very much. Happy birthday, Oliver. 
He's he's eight years old. <laughs> it does not feel like it was eight years ago that he was born. It's just wow. Love you guys very much. Have a great night. And we'll talk to you very soon. What's the thing I do at the very end? Oh yeah, I click over here and then I, I look at you and then, ready? Re cue it. One, two, three. Outro. Thank you.